He's still got two more hours to play. Looks like our lobby is ready. We are ready to jump into this, and it's going to be... Game number three. Akalon Waste, game number three, one-to-one. -one. Anybody's game, ace match in this best of three. All right, and here we go. Thanks again for joining us, everyone. We are pleased to have you. Imp Shadow, thanks for giving us a shout out there as we join in on Akalon Waste in the lower right-hand corner, coming back to take a game off of our other opponent to even it up. It is wearing the yellow carapace, Spider Slayer. And in the top left-hand corner, not playing quite as decisively in the previous game as he did in the first, making this series one-to-one, -one, it is Eclair. So both of these games haven't really made it out of the early game. They've been kind of uh, locked into the uh, you know, the early game stages, not getting into the mid-game, not getting into much Lair Tech at all, really. Uh, just very intense Zergling, Baneling, micro battles. Such as ZVZ, right? I mean, usually, yeah, but occasionally one player decides, or both players decide, you know what, I'm not really making a lot of headway, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just going to go for Lair Tech and see if we can get this in the mid-game. Uh, both these players have been exposing weaknesses of the other and able to lock it down with uh, pretty big swells of units in the early game. I haven't played a lot of Zerg myself since Wings of Liberty. I actually made an effort to try and learn Zerg. I'm a Protoss player by, uh, by nature, and uh, yeah, but it seems like when we did that, or when I was playing Zerg, it's just, it just really seems hard because you're so almost scared. Or well, like when I was doing it, I was so scared every time. Like, oh my gosh, if he does this, I'm just dead. So I got to <laughs> do this to protect myself. When in, you know, in actuality, when you're cutting corners to try and you know get that pool a little bit earlier, you're actually hindering yourself. Yeah, you know, there's just a, a, as with most builds and most races, you know, there's very fine lines of when things are good to do and when things aren't good to do. But it looks like we are seeing, again, similar openings as we've seen all night from these two. Uh, Eclair getting the gas first and then getting the spawning pool to even, get that early speed and uh, even, Spider Slayer getting the pool first. They even had those drones uh, rallied on that gas a bit earlier there. Maybe could have gotten one or two returns of minerals left, but nonetheless, uh, a drone is going to be going out for Spider Slayer. He doesn't have money right now. So that's because he's already got a hatchery queued up. That's right. So a early, I mean, this is the same build we've seen out of both players, and we've seen it go two different ways. So I'd say it's definitely anybody's game at this point. It just depends on that, uh, you know, just the engagements of Spider Slayer and the fact that last time it's whoever built the spine crawler at their natural was <laughs> the one that uh, had the advantage because man, that just you know when you've got low numbers of light units coming in, those spine crawlers are so valuable. They really are, and especially against those banelings, uh, Eclair did not get his baneling nest quite as quickly as he did in that first game, and banelings are so vital in the early stages of the Zerg versus Zerg matchup. So. Uh, We'll see if he decides to get that a little bit sooner this game than he did the previous game. Overlord is coming in from Spider Slayer, so he does see that his opponent has an expansion. He's been sending those out all over the place. Both players have been good about spreading out their overlords. Not been a lot of creep, but you don't often see a ton of creep spread in ZVZ because it helps the other person just as much as it helps you. Mm -hmm. Although that vision is always nice, though. Vision is a good thing, as most people who have it agree. Yep. Uh, so that speed is half done now for uh, Eclair. As uh, n what? Where should the emphasis be? Eclair or Eclair? Uh, you know, I don't know. Nonetheless, the builds are <laughs> the same. Uh, speed is half done for Eclair, and the Baneling Nest is almost done for Spider Slayer. So we're going to see the same types of engagements here. Zerg uh, Zerglings being produced by Eclair. Uh, a Zergling of Spider Slayer is in there. He sees all those Zerglings pop out, so he knows it's going to be on his way. Uh, the queen of Spider Slayer trying to shoo away these pesky overlords here. Eclair was able to take down the Zergling that was running around in his base. Uh, but he is making a two Banelings right away as soon as they come out of their little cocoons or egg sacks, I suppose. Yeah, and Spider Slayer has his speed now going down as well. Three overlords in uh, production for Eclair as uh, that one was taken out by the queen just outside Spider Slayer's natural, so it's going to cost him some money to get that up. But these Zerglings come in right almost in the Banelings, but they... Oh, yeah. great control there by both players. Yeah. Spider Slayer really able to get the Baneling in a position where if uh, Eclair tried to go up that ramp, he would have been able to take out a decent number of those Zerglings. Spider Slayer putting down two Spine Crawlers now. Uh, you know, and I honestly think the more Spine Crawlers you put down, the less Banelings you have to make, and the sooner you can uh, transition into those Mutalists. That is possible. Oh, 
Spider Slayer wanna... trying to get a little cheeky with the single Zergling, or Baneling rather, but Eclair pulls off a single Zergling and gets a really good trade. So it looks like Eclair is going to be pulling back here, and uh, Spider Slayer is going to see that as all the Zerglings run right under the Overlord, and he's like, oh shoot, I just showed him that I'm coming back to my base. Yeah. Uh, it does look like Eclair did decide to make a decent number of drones, put down a Roach Warren behind that, and then uh, went right back into Zergling production. Yeah, it's pretty smart. I mean, you know, he when Spider Slayer defended Eclair's first couple pushes is when uh, Spider Slayer then went over to Eclair's base, and he made the Roach Warren, but it was just too late because the Zerglings and Banelings were there by the time the Roach Warren was finishing, and then still had to produce Roaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this game looks, you know, it's a little bit more passive than previous games. Uh, there's nine Zerglings and four Banelings, four Spider Slayer on the map currently. He's making a few largely, more production. Yeah, it largely looks like he's just doing some scouting with these, uh, uh, what, five Zerglings running around. Uh, gets in, does see the Roach Warren. Oh, makes a couple Banelings in the side of Eclair's base here. So if he didn't notice this, this could be nasty if he can get them into the mineral line. Two oh, Zerg no. oh, Banelings on the other side, too. Those Zerglings did go up there, but he did not spot them, it looks like. And it, that was really smart by Spider Slayer to split them up in case one group did get caught. The other, he, uh, Eclair probably would have thought, you know, I've already taken care of those. But now the Banelings are All the are drones piling up. Oh, five drones go down to that first pair of Banelings. And now another pair of Banelings are going in as the drones are starting to feel safe, but they're still pretty clumped up, and in they go, and another huge oh, hit. Oh, man, that was a total of six. It looked like 14 drones killed by Spider Slayer. That was a really great move. And now Spider Slayer has an advantage here too in the middle. He's all these Zerglings pushing the Zerglings of Eclair back. And it looks like Spider Slayer is hoping to press that advantage as he is going full bore on Zerglings now. Engaging in the middle of the map, there are a decent number of Roaches for Eclair here, and so that's going to help out against the numbers of Zerglings. And uh, Spider Slayer is going to want to regroup and be able to surround those Roaches and uh, catch them off guard if possible. Yeah, so I think Spider Slayer just trying to soften up those Roaches as much as he can because he does have three Banelings back at his natural. A lot of Zerglings. Oh, he's got five Banelings, a lot of Zerglings here as well as two Spine Crawlers. So that Baneling moving forward, not really getting a whole lot of splash damage. Does a little bit of damage to that lead Roach, oh. but Spider Slayer deciding to counterattack with his Zerglings, and sure enough, Eclair is pulling back with the majority of the Zerglings. If he can hold off with these Banelings and these two spine crawlers, this can do a lot of damage. He's got a lot of Zerglings in the main base of Eclair. And this is, I, I love this play, you know, when you when you run a bunch of Zerglings into like the mineral line, but you cut off like three or four just to keep the uh, units of your opponent back so they're not actually defending in the most appropriate place. Just a great, great play, great control. Uh, Zergling's still poking around off Spider Slayer, keeping Eclair busy. I mean, really, it's just keeping the units back. These roaches have been sitting outside the natural expansion of Spider Slayer for quite oh, a long time. So all the Banelings many coming Banelings. in. And who says that Banelings aren't good against roaches that, when you have 20 of them? Yeah, I mean, they didn't kill anything, but the few Zerglings that are left are able to soften them up. And, you know, honestly, those roaches killed enough. They aren't able to come up the ramp into these spine crawlers. And, you know, that is what he wanted. He wanted to take out those roaches before they were able to take down the spine crawlers. And Banelings are now there. There are no roaches left, so these Banelings are going to be pretty useful. Uh, trade for one for three there. Not terrible, but not great for sure. So there was a pretty fragile moment there where it seemed like Eclair, was, you know, he didn't have any economy because Spider Slayer had killed most of it, but he did have a lot of units. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like if he would have poked up there, he might have had a chance. I mean, it wouldn't have been a clear cut, but, uh, you know, Spider Slayer did a good job of maybe recognizing that Eclair's not as good at defending his base and attacking at the same time and sending, and even look at this now, he's splitting up his Zerglings into two different groups. Yeah, he's just trying to take down all the drones and he's being very successful at it. There are very few and there's the GG by Eclair. So this is going to go in favor of Spider Slayer. It's going to end up 2-3. to three. So Spider Slayer did come back from a one-game deficit. Eclair winning the first game. And, uh, you know, he's, he changed some settings after that first game. And God darn it, I want to know what settings he changed. Well, I think that we'll be able to find out when we do a post-game interview. Absolutely. So we're going to get that set up. And uh, we'll also have some news for you on what will be happening the rest of the evening. So give us just a minute, and we will get Spider Slayer to have a chat with you. And we will be right back. <laughs> 